Hi, welcome to Community Spotlight, public media network's show about local nonprofits, who and what they are, and how you can get involved. And today I have the pleasure of welcoming Alan Zobian and Spletlana Stone with the Kalamazoo Russian Cultural Association. Hi, welcome Spetlana and Alan. Nice to, of you to be here today. Thank you for Thank us. you. I would like to start off first, if I may, with uh, stating what the mission is of the Kalamazoo Cultural, the Russian Cultural Association is. Sure. Well, the, the overarching mission of the association is really to uh, build bridges between Americans and Russians. Uh, it's really a grassroots organization aimed at uh, citizen diplomacy and uh, just building uh, an understanding and an appreciation of, of our two cultures okay. and uh, just really um, removing a lot of the uh, stereotypes that we have, you know, going back historically with the Cold War and uh, um, even previous to that with, you know, back to like drop and cover type of videos, you know, uh, in the atomic age that, you know, we really want to overcome that and uh, just help foster that idea that you know we're all people mm -hmm. our cultures are different but at the end of the day we're all human beings mm -hmm. and uh, we can learn from each other and become stronger through that sharing of uh of knowledge and culture okay all right great could i have a little bit of background history on both of you svetlana why don't you start for me please uh you mean for just you your history a little bit about you so i was born uh, in latvia mm -hmm. and um, then it, it used to be a former Soviet Union, mm -hmm. if people remember about that. And uh, one day I woke up and it was a completely different country. It was um, free Latvia and independent Latvia. And then um, later I immigrated to the United States. And um, this is how I end up here. I'm very happy to be here and thankful for everything, for every a one who I met in my life. Okay, great. Super. Alan? Um, I am originally from the Battle Creek area. Um, I spent a number of years in the Army. Um, so I got to see, uh, I was a Spanish linguist, so I got to see mostly Latin America. Um, then I came back um, into this area uh, after my military service. Um, I still uh, work for the federal government mm -hmm. um, and still have uh, uh, very large interest in just foreign cultures, foreign languages, and um, international relations. Okay, great. Um, how long have you both been with the Russian Cultural Association? I think I've been with them for five years, okay. and I'll enjoy the organization for the last two years. Two years, yeah. All right. If, give us a little bit of history of the organization itself. When it got started, who started it? Absolutely. I think it, that's a cute little story. Yeah, it's uh, the, the organization has been around for 19 years. This is our 19th annual okay. festival, and, mm -hmm. and so we have been around. I think actually been around for about 20 or 21 years in some form or another. And really the way that the organization got started was with a group of friends mm -hmm. getting together. Um, they uh, had taken some vacations to Russia, um, were interested in Russian culture um, and understanding it. And when they got back to the States, uh, there was a, a couple, Mike and Marie Stolin, they decided to have a gathering in their backyard. Mm -hmm. um, Mike wanted to have a bluegrass festival and Marie thought, well, maybe a, a Russian festival would be a little bit more, more interesting. So they did a combined bluegrass and Russian festival um, the, the Russian festival was a huge hit and the Bluegrass Festival not so much. Uh, so they decided going forward that they would have an annual uh, Russian festival mm -hmm. as a way to get uh, everyone together and kind of celebrate this, uh, that, their interest in that culture. Okay. Um, as more and more people got involved, the organization uh, started to grow, mm -hmm. as happens. Um, eventually, um, it kind of went in really a couple different tracks. Number one is the festival. They kept having the annual festival that eventually moved into uh, Kalamazoo Valley Community College and then from there uh, onto the Western campus where it is today. Um, but as they were doing that and really using that as a celebration of Russian culture, they all felt that they wanted to get involved and they built uh, an organization called the uh, Kalamazoo Pushkin Partnership. Mm -hmm. 
And what that was really aimed at was, uh, at the time, there was a critical need for medical supplies in the city of Pushkin, Russia, um, which they had found out about in their travels and in making acquaintances and building friendships over there. And so uh, the group really felt um, that they needed to do something. And uh, as I understand, Marie was really, Stolene was really one of the ones who was instrumental in really bringing that group together. Um, uh, and she was just fabulous skills in that regard, could just uh, you know, really get people behind ideas and get people excited about things. And so they built this, and they ended up, I, I, and I don't remember the exact number, but it was two or three cargo containers of medical supplies that they actually finally put together. And I think it was somewhere over a half a million dollars worth of equipment that they were able to get um, donated or given or pulled together themselves and get shipped over there to help them at that uh, critical juncture. And um, out of their efforts, we did build a, a city sister relationship with Pushkin Russia here in Kalamazoo, mm -hmm. um, which continues to this day up until even uh, at our last festival, we had a group of visitors from Pushkin Russia come over. They were media professionals and they filmed it. Um, they were able to interview folks and uh, put together a documentary in Russian uh, about the history between our two cities and the festival itself, um, which was very interesting. And while they were here, they actually got to go to a city council meeting and meet with the, meet with the mayor and be recognized as visiting from our, from our sister city. So yes. it's a very, very interesting history. Okay. And that continues to grow. Okay. So. And I want to add to this sure. that what is unique about our organization, that it's run by American people. Because when usually you hear like Russian festival, festival or, or Kalamazoo Russian uh, Cultural Association, the people immediately think, so oh, what is the population, Russian population in Kalamazoo? Mm -hmm. And I like, no, 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 that's why they are, you know, we are unique. It's run by Americans who passion about Russian culture, about Russian people. And that's what makes it unique when you hear the other festivals um, happen here and there. They usually are run by Russian-speaking population, but what is unique about this particular group, they are Americans. Okay. Okay. That's what Very I want to nice. add. Cool. Um, okay, you are a nonprofit. Yes. So how do you go about getting your funding to support the association? Do you have, write grants? Do you do fundraisers? Um, how, how, how are your monies coming in to support the association? Well. Some of the funds that we have gotten uh, were inherited from the previous organization, the Kalamazoo uh, Pushkin Partnership. Okay. Um, but uh, right now, the, the primary ways that we are getting uh, our funding are number one, through grants mm -hmm. that, we, that we request, um, particularly um, through the Gilmore Foundation, which has been just a, a, a wonderful sponsor um, of, our, of our festival, of our performers. Um, you know, we really could not do it without them. And so, you know, we really are very, very grateful uh, for their involvement and their interest in what we're doing. Um, and also the festival itself uh, does uh, generate income, okay. um, which we, uh, you know, retain and, and mm -hmm. pass on. And so we've been able to grow the festival, particularly over the past, past few years by looking at uh, how can we have a bigger impact with that by reinvesting the money and continuing to work with the, with the Gilmore Foundation. And we are now at the point where we are beginning to look at what other fundraising type of uh, opportunities we could undertake. Okay. Um, and hopefully learning from some of the other local uh, nonprofit organizations mm -hmm. to see what's been successful for them. But then also leveraging our own particular strengths uh, to do fundraising in our own unique ways. Sure. So sure. going forward. Um, I just thought of something to tag on to that. Um, and I completely can't remember it. So, so we also have like, <laughs> individual, just regular individual who donate their uh, finances okay. and okay. support to the organization. So they um, kind of like, okay. it's also yeah, helpful right. when, right. Yeah, so and we should, we should probably mention that. I mean, one of the ways that, the, that we do fund the, the festival is through uh, our program. Um, we, you know, the local community really rallies behind that. We get a number of businesses in, in the local community who, uh, you know, pay to advertise um, in our program, which, uh, you know, on the one hand, you know, it's, uh, last year we had about, we estimate 1,500 visitors. We're expecting about, you know, 2,000 this year. So, you know, it, it is a way for them to get their, their presence known and to actually get some value for their advertising dollar. But at the same time, these are very, very 
successful businesses anyway, so we do understand that really what is driving this is just a desire by these businesses to do good in their community, and so we're, we are so very, very thankful uh, for that and very amazed at uh, the, um, you know, the, the giving spirit within Kalamazoo to, uh, to, to you know, make the community yes. better and to build up these type of type of events is just, Kalamazoo is an amazing, amazing place mm -hmm. for that, so. For a, for a one-day festival, this is a big program. You agree, this mm -hmm. is a lot of support, this is a lot of activity, this is a great, mm -hmm. great program here. Besides the festival, what other activities does the association get, in, does the association do during the course of the year? Uh, I think you alluded to a picnic, I think, that you have. Yeah, we have um, monthly potluck. Okay which um, we invite many different speakers mm -hmm. and on different theme and it's usually it goes at Kalamazoo Library or other places that we rent. Okay. So and yeah, the library now, we're, we're locked in with the library. Okay. And usually, uh, since it's potluck, like people bring a dish to share, usually it's Russian traditional dish, and then um, the people who are responsible for the pot, like it's uh, Jerry and Louise portraits, mm -hmm. as I mentioned earlier, so they're working on inviting interesting speakers, and we always have wonderful, wonderful program okay. for that, web, and it's open to public. Okay. You also host visitors throughout the year? Yeah, randomly we host uh, visitors from Russia, and uh, recently we had um, Together with Colleagues Internationals, we host um, people from Russia. Their topics were, were was autism, and mm -hmm. we like provide them trip to Chicago. We took them to Chicago, and they had wonderful experience as well as uh, farewell dinner. So mm -hmm. they were really impressed and thankful for that. Right. Yeah, and like last year, we had visitors from Pushkin, mm -hmm. and. Every time when we have this opportunity, we of course we host and do it with a great joy. Okay, great. Do you have a very large volunteer base? Um, at this point, I think what do we what do we have in our database now? I think we have about seventy-five people. And in what capacity do they generally do for you? Well, in a number of different capacities. Um, a lot of them serve on the board or on subcommittees of the board, uh, get involved with uh, helping out at the festival. Mm -hmm. We really get a lot of help there. And um, really the biggest thing that, uh, that they do in terms of just the level of effort and, and the amount of financial involvement with the organization is actually hosting uh, the, these the visitors when they come over. We frequently partner with Colleagues International mm -hmm. um, to help them find host families and provide transportation for the groups that they bring in. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the Russian speaking groups, um, and um, also uh, have partnered with them in a couple of instances to actually bring professional groups in. Okay, so. great. Um, now, you do have a specific event coming up that we've talked about, we've alluded to, it's come up in the conversation quite a bit, and it's the 19th, 19th annual Russian Festival. So I would love you to just tell everybody everything about it, because it looks like a fabulous day. So, well, we are really excited about that. I just personally believe in the festival. And I talked to many people already, to our supporters, and I just tried to explain them that it's not just music and wonderful food and wonderful people. There's a great mission behind, like Alan told, you know, mm -hmm. building a bridge among a culture, bring people together. Mm -hmm especially right now, we don't want anything to fight for. We want to share, mm -hmm. and we can share our culture. And this is, festival is very unique um, because it's contained educational programs mm -hmm. and uh, children programs. And um, the, we have Judy Rithma, who is uh, responsible for educational programs. She is a vice president um, at Kalamazoo Russian Cultural mm -hmm. Association. She did this year wonderful, phenomenal program. And uh, the theme of the festival this year is actually celebrating winter holidays. And uh, the old professor will lecture somehow it will connect to that. Okay. And because um, it looks like you've got about seven or eight different, eight different topics and mm -hmm. times for people to come and, and listen. Yep. Eight different educators. I think this is the yes. most that we've, that we've had. We had quite a bit of interest 
this year, um, again, uh, and I think we're continuing to see that, a growth trend right mm -hmm. now in the, in the festival, people getting involved. So yeah, it's a very excellent, outstanding educational program. Well, I'm year. looking at symbolism in the Soviet Union, um, studying abroad in Russia. Um, you've got the US and Russia and Crimea. Yeah. Uh, there's some. There are some really good, in, including also the you know the, the more lighter weight stuff like Russian poems, right? Or winter just, winter yeah, the, uh, characters right. like uh, Dead mm -hmm. Maroz and Snigurichka. Mm -hmm. And as I said mm -hmm. earlier, mentioned that uh, the theme of the festival is uh, celebrating winter holidays. Mm -hmm. What's that mean? We want uh, people to learn more about how people celebrate. Uh, celebrate uh, holiday winters in Russia, and the big of them is New Year. And um, Alan probably would add why it's a big celebrating New Year. Uh, yeah, what we're, what we're really looking at is not only the differences between the ways that we celebrate the holidays mm -hmm. um, in Russia and America, but uh, what are the similarities? And so it's very interesting um, under the uh, Soviet Union, when religion was more or less banned, uh, you weren't going to have a Santa Claus or any religious figures involved with that. And so the New Year's holiday became the big celebration. Um, but of course, prior to the Bolshevik Revolution, Christianity was there. So people you know, still remembered mm -hmm. these things. So they kind of co-opted uh, some of the traditional Christmas uh, or things that we associate with Christmas with their New Year celebration. So they have a New Year's tree. Uh, they don't have Santa Claus. They have Father Frost. Okay. Uh, he does still bring gifts, so okay. they've got that going. Um, and, of, and of course, you know, in any, in any type of, uh, it's, it's a time of, of family, and in any family type events, you know, you're going to have feasting, you're going to have, you know, eating and drinking and enjoying each other's company and celebrating and music and happiness. Right. So it's, yeah, it's, okay. it's very interesting. So differences, but more similarities. Okay. So in, in addition to then all the educational great topics that people can go and listen to, there is the entertainment, there yes, is the music. And both of you are musicians, and you both participate in this. Ms. Lana, you sing, and Alan, you play various guitars, mm -hmm. and you sing in how many languages? I don't know, approximately maybe seven different, okay. but maybe more. I didn't okay. count. I need, to, okay. <laughs> I need to do it again. So, and will you be dressed in the traditional Russian costume? I think we might actually be in full costume mode. We're uh, uh, the uh, Dead Maroj, Father Frost, and Snagura Chica, which is, I think, what is it, the niece? Is that what that means? What does that mean? Which, yeah, yeah she, the she traditional is the Russian grand granddaughter. character. Or granddaughter, granddaughter. Okay. So Father Frost and his granddaughter are the ones who bring presents over there. So uh, they'll be making a visit. And, uh, um, is that you too? To then. That will be us It'll too. Be and so I, too? We will probably okay. still be in those costumes when we... <laughs> When, okay. when we perform, given the, given okay. the uh, schedule of events on the okay. day, it's, it's pretty, as, as you've been mm -hmm. uh, alluding to, it's a very packed schedule. It is. Uh, you've got the art, Russian art, uh, the dance and crafts, um, the costumes, as we said, hearing the language spoken. I would assume that people are going to be walking around and just conversing mm -hmm. in Russian, in Russian right? yep. okay. And we have a phenomenal children program. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have every year a uh, great program, but this year we uh, specifically were focused on family and children and invited two um, great groups that will entertain our children. And uh, one of them is uh, Barinya, the group from New York. They are focused on children education. They will teach uh, little children um, how to speak Russian, Russian alphabet, through games, through play. Then they also will be dressed up different costumes. They also will provide um, folk Russian dance workshop. So they'll show some simple elements of Russian um, traditional dance. Okay. And uh, they also will have a huge, huge um, bear. Costume. Costume, okay. yeah. Of <laughs> <laughs> bear costume. Yeah. So, so it's, it's going to be a really great entertainment for children as well as for the adults. Okay. Everyone will find something that they will enjoy, and that's what this festival is unique about. Everyone. We have phenomenal vendors. Mm -hmm. The goods that they will provide and bring to the festival, it's just... I cannot even explain. You just want to say you, you just want to buy everything, basically. Okay. I want to ask about the, and I'm I'm probably not going to pronounce this right, but the famous Paisanki, Paisanki eggs. Paisanki, Paisanki eggs. Well, it's close. Good. 
Hassan, yeah, you did explain great. that, please. It's going to be a workshop where um, the, um, we invited uh, Fedorchak. Fedorchak, she will provide a workshop. Usually people um, come in and uh, she provides a really plain egg. Mm -hmm. Usually it's from wood, mm -hmm. and show the ornaments, how to decorate it, and okay. paint the egg yourself. Okay. So last year we had it was a two hours workshop, and people don't want to go home. You know, she started at three, and it was at five. Our festival is over. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we couldn't. You know, people let go because this is how they were involved, and the classroom were absolutely full. That's what phenomenal. You know, people mm -hmm. want to learn. They want to go to the festival and actually learn. So many festival people go and they do not get anything. Mm -hmm. Not even interact with each other because there are some other things, you know. Um, but not even anything to learn, you know. Mm -hmm. And you come over here, you really enjoy. I heard um, from other people who attend the festival very nice comments. They were saying it's a nice spirit. We really enjoy. We had people from Latvian community come last year and that's what really important for me, you know, being from Latvia and from Forward Soviet Union to see other people that, like I always say, we have nothing to fight, you know. We, mm -hmm. we want to share and we want to be together and this is the unique mm -hmm. moment, you know, that we can do it at the festival and actually, you know, like break all those stereotypes, all those uh, political games mm -hmm. that we don't want to be involved. We right. just see the person, doesn't matter what color or what um, country they came from. It, there is a place for everyone, right. you know. Right. So. Okay. Um, I, I see, I don't know if you're doing this this year. I was curious, a traditional bread and salt ceremony. Will that be taking place? Yep. Could you explain that's, that? Yep, that is, I have sure. no idea what that is. Yep. Um, I'm sure yep. there's other We do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do that every year in uh, basically um, the traditional welcoming uh, to, uh, to a Russian home is that you're welcome with bread and, and salt. Okay. Um, and I can't, you'll have to remember, I refresh my memory what, uh, what they actually mean, the, because each has a meaning, the bread is. Uh, yeah, but it's a really nice way of hospitality. This is how they um, welcome in people, and it's an old tradition. Unfortunately, I didn't know all nuances about that, mm -hmm. but it's very cool. It's just, health, I think it's health and long life. I think the bread is health. I was just saying salt. And the salt is, is, yeah, is long life, maybe because it's a preservative. I, but uh, okay. yeah, but that is yeah. We open the ceremony with that um, every okay. every year. I just didn't want to get that reversed. But hopefully, okay. I got that right. Health right. and longevity. Do you and have they, it, but anybody, it might be the other way around. Who's is uh, who's opening your your festival? For so, you? uh, the the president of the KRCA, uh, Gary Lee McCormick, okay. uh, leads this bread and salt ceremony, and I believe that we will have, um, well, uh, I think it's Bob Dunn is the president of the university. Uh, we were gonna have him, he, he couldn't make it, so they're having the, the, the head of one of the other departments has agreed to step in, okay. but I don't, uh, we just got that memo. Um, I'm okay. not sure that is. We will also have, uh, I think it's uh, Sean McCann, McCann. Okay. and um, we're also hoping to get uh, Margaret, Margaret O'Brien okay. as a, speaker for one of okay. our opening ceremony. Yeah, yeah it's okay. great to have all those so. people that they care about us mm -hmm. and they also will come over. And I think and is it uh, Sinabro also, I believe, was another one that, Bob Sinabro, is that it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the, it could be changed, you okay. know, because. Yeah, Gary, right. Gary, our, our president actually is the one who reaches out to the, okay. to the folks and gets those and in, in, gets them involved. And so there's a, we usually reach out to a number of, uh, of, um, you know, local uh, officials. Yeah, officials and government officials right. to see if they're available. And they all, always respond overwhelmingly positively. Uh, but then as we get closer to the festival today, these people are in extremely high demand. Well, so it is November. It, yeah, and it, and it, and it kind of shifts, right? And it kind of shifts. So um, we're always grateful when they, when they yeah. can actually show up. But okay. it's, yeah, so we, when they, you know, we, we, when they agree to be there, we take it in the spirit that, you know, yes, we really want to, we want right. to be there. And I mean, we know that they do, and we really appreciate their, Okay. Their support. So. I was looking at some of the foods from uh, from the video. Oh my gosh, they look so delicious, um, and all traditional Russian. The pastries look phenomenal. Um, just 
I'm, I'm looking forward. I'm hoping that I can make it that day because I would love to try some of the tastes and uh, see the costumes and see the, the stories that are being created and recreated and the children's activities. Do you have anything that's happened that is a special story um, that really touched your heart or something during one of the festivals that you'd like to share with us today? Anything that just, or a funny story, something that wild and crazy happened or something? Well, you know the. Hmm, there's a lot that goes on during these during these festivals. Yeah. I'm trying to think of just one one specific event. We've been really involved with the. Uh, you know, we're on the ground running it mm -hmm. during the day, so um, unfortunately, we don't get to enjoy it as much as we would right. as much as we would like. But I think you know one of the things that stands out to me is. Um, you know, we had the guests from Pushkin last year, um, and in all of the groups that actually come, you know, they, they, they echoed a sentiment that we hear all of the time, that, you know, they came here, they really enjoyed the festival, um, and as we were winding up that night, we, we, we usually end it with a, a pizza party for all of the board members, the volunteers, um, with the uh, performers, um, with our special guests last mm -hmm. year. This year we'll be expending it, extending the invitation also to our sponsors. Um, and advertisers to come and join us um, if they're available. But, uh, you know, as we were having the pizza party, this group from Russia really commented that, you know, they're, you know, they hear things when they're coming over here. They're nervous to come over uh, to America because they're not really sure what kind of reception they're going to get. Um, you know, a lot of the politics historically haven't mm -hmm. been warm. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, but the, the thing that, they're, that they go home with, and what, that's what they say is that, you know, what we're going home with is, is an overwhelming feeling of warmth, right. uh, that we were truly cared for when we were here, um, and that we felt truly welcomed everywhere, everywhere that we went and appreciated for who we were. And it's just a wonderful feeling to carry back with us. And, um, and on the flip side of that, you know, a lot of the American guests to the festival, you know, we just hear, wow, I didn't know that, that you know, Russian culture was like this, that there was so much so much to it, you know, that there's so much, uh, uh, you know, warmth and, and music and, you know, there that, you know, you know, people are just people. So right. I think it, it, yeah, it's really just, uh, you know, wonderful uh, mind expanding and heart expanding event on both sides. And the, also I heard a feedback from young people like 18, 17, 19, 16. We had um, last year exchange students from several different countries and uh, it's very nice to hear feedback from them mm -hmm. because you make a festival and you kind of like it but what about the young right. generation you know always uh, it's always important to involve them mm -hmm. and when you hear a great feedback like wow that was a great I want to go back you know and I want to volunteer for the festival that's what is very nice to hear that's you understand that you are in the right way, you know, so you want to bring not only people, but the family and different generations, so right. everyone will feed and find something for them to do. That's what this festival is very unique, you know. I just, I never heard about anything like that anywhere. Just usually, like I said, you go there as a performers mm -hmm. and food. That's it, nothing. And people don't want to go home, like I said. They want to stay there. And it's very short. It starts at 9 and finish at 5. Mm -hmm. You think, um, because there is so much to do, I, I recommend to everyone, come early for the opening ceremony and spend the whole day with the family and friends and just explore what we have and try food. Uh, the WMU catering mm -hmm. stuff, they... Uh, did great job last year, as you noticed. Mm -hmm. They, and this year, even gonna be better. Mm -hmm. We improve um, our menu. We add new things. And yeah, that's what very great to to hear this nice feedback from young generation. It's not only like so. Like people like middle age and um, mm -hmm. older, but when you see young people, interesting. That's mean that we are on the right way. And a lot of children was uh, last year coming to see the um, shows that specifically was designed for them. So we expect more children and family and just educators mm -hmm. and students who come over because for everyone. Okay. 
Well, let's talk about the details real quick before we, we um, finish up here. So it's November 15th, Saturday, and as you said, 9 to 5. Location is at? Western Michigan University Fetzer Center, and parking lot is for free, but there are some entrance fees. Okay, and could, do you know what they are this year? Can you share that with us? Yes. Sure. So the family uh, pass will be $25. Okay. Children um, from 2 to 12 okay. years old, $3. Okay. And for students, and I believe for the older students people, seniors, yeah, seniors okay. $6. Okay. And regular adult ticket is? $10. $10. Yes. Okay. Very reasonable for a full day of all that kind of activity. Mm -hmm. And that includes all the performances mm -hmm. and the, the discussions. Yep. And I would assume the food is there on their own for the food. Yep. Very yeah. inexpensive yeah. food. I want to let everyone know very inexpensive. Okay. You know, you're not going to find for uh, the prices and the quality that the Western and Michigan. the authenticity. Right. Yeah, not going to able to. You go to other places, either to the festival, food is very expensive in mm -hmm. there. It's very reasonable prices. And you can be found, um, you have a website, and what other style of social media are you available yeah, we're, on? We're really um, leaning more towards uh, the our Facebook page. That's okay. where we would really, I think, encourage people to go to. We can keep that extremely updated okay. and, you know, uh, you know, day by day what's going on. Mm -hmm. And we also have a YouTube channel, so where we post our, okay. our videos. Um, it's really for the Kalamazoo Russian Cultural Association okay. YouTube channel. So we, uh, we helped the Balalaika and Domra Association of America when they were here with their local festival. So we put their videos out there, and then we also put our videos out here of uh, okay. uh, performers in the Russian community as well. So. Okay. All right. Well, Svetlana and Alan, thank you so much for being here today um, for the Kalamazoo Russian Cultural Association and the Russian Festival. And what we're going to finish up with is a, a short video that uh, they brought about last year's festival that you can look at. And Svetlana, would you set this up for us and let them kind of know what they're going to be seeing in the video? The video uh, on the video, you would be able to see our 18th last year uh, festival highlights. The what food was there served. Uh, performers, children program, educational program, just a little bit of everything so you can get a taste of the festival. But this year, festival will be even better. Like I said earlier, it's going to be a winter holiday theme. People will be in a costume, and it's going to be like a winter uh, spirit. The place that um, the festival will be run will be decorated very beautiful with the New Year trees. That's how we call Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and music, of course, live music. We also invited, I forgot to mention, um, ballroom um, dancers oh, this okay. year from Sharon's okay. studio. The ballroom dancing, it's a big um, deal in Russia, mm -hmm. and especially during the holiday. So, and uh, Sharon's uh, studio graciously agreed to bring their team and um, present um, some of their nice. wonderful Very dance. Nice. Great. Program. Well, thank you so much. Please enjoy the video, and thank you so much for coming today. And we look forward to the Russian Festival on November 15th. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks.